Hello everyone, I am Dr. Lakshmi Kumar. I am an interventional radiologist at Pace Hospitals, Hyderabad. Today we will discuss about a common condition called diabetic foot. As the name suggests, it happens in patients with diabetes. So, if the foot of a diabetic patient develops infection or wound or if there is any loss of part of a foot, then it is called diabetic foot. So, this diabetic foot is due to uh, either peripheral neuropathy or peripheral arterial disease that develops in the diabetic patients. The diabetic patients have increased glucose levels and increased lipid levels in their blood. So, these two uh, will damage the nerves. So, that is called diabetic neuropathy. So, if the nerve is damaged, the patient will not feel sensation of pain or sensation of cold or heat in his feet. So, for example, if a patient's uh, shoe or a slipper has a stone or nail in the shoe or slipper, the patient will walk on it whole day without feeling that there is a stone or nail in his shoe or slipper. So, that is one example. Also, due to diabetic neuropathy, uh, there will be loss of hair on the skin and the na nails will become thick and uh, yellowish. So, these are also other features of diabetic neuropathy. In patient with uh, severe diabetic neuropathy, the bones uh, will get repeated injuries as the patient is not able to feel the pain. So, these repeated injuries will leads to deformity in the foot. That means, the shape of the foot will become altered. This condition is called Charcot's foot or Charcot's neuropathy. Similar to coronary artery disease, you might be knowing what is coronary artery disease, myocardial infarction or the heart stroke. In, in that condition, the heart blood vessels will get blocked. So, that will be called the heart stroke. Similarly, here the blood vessels called arteries which bring blood from the heart to the legs, they will get narrowed or blocked. This is called peripheral arterial disease. This can happen in any of the blood vessel in the body, but commonly this happens in the leg arteries. So, what happens in this is due to increased glucose levels and increased lipid levels or fat levels in the blood, the fat plagues will accumulate in the walls of the arteries. This will result in narrowing or blockage of these arteries. So, that is peripheral arterial disease. The symptoms of peripheral artery disease, the most classical symptom they will be having is on doing some activity like walking or some other activity exercise, they will develop pain in the calf or thigh or in the hip region and once they take rest for some time, the pain will decrease and then again they will, uh, they can do the activity. This is called claudication. This is the classical symptom for peripheral arterial disease. Also, if uh, the peripheral arterial disease is severe, the patient can develop pain even in a resting state. That is a resting pain, we call it. And if the occlusion of the arteries is severe and it is uh, very acute, means within one or two days, if the occlusion of arteries develops and it is extensive, the patient can have severe pain and the limb may become pale means it will lose the normal color and it will become pale and it will become cold to touch and the limb will be difficult to move. There will be weakness in move, moving the limb. Also, the pulses will not be felt. So, these are all the uh, symptoms if you develop an acute peripheral arterial disease, acute occlusion. This condition we call it as acute limb ischemia. So, other risk factors are smoking, 
hypertension, obesity, prolonged standing or sitting that is sedentary lifestyle. So, these are all risk factors. Other risk factors like uh, if you have a chronic kidney disease or a family history, those are also risk factors and if some genetic conditions like increased homocysteine levels and increased fibrinogen levels, these are also predisposed to develop the peripheral arterial disease. If you go to a doctor or a physician, he will uh, first check your uh, blood sugar levels, how is the sugar control and also he will do physical examination of the uh, foot. So, in the foot he will check if there is any signs of uh, neuropathy. By uh, using a variety of instruments, he will check how is the sensation in your foot. Also, he will check for uh, any uh, ulcers or any calluses and also he will check the pulses. Then he will check how is your uh, footwear, is it uh, appropriately fitting to your feet or not. Also, he can uh, advise some tests uh, to look at the arteries like uh, ultrasound or CT or MR angiography. So, with these tests, we can uh, directly visualize the vessels, how are they, is there any narrowing or not. Also, if uh, the, there are extensive calcifications within these arteries, then the CT, MR uh, angiography will be difficult. Uh, then, in those cases, uh, DSA, digital subtraction angiography will be done to look at the arteries. This will be a gold standard test to look at the arteries. Also to diagnose peripheral arterial disease, there is one test called ankle brachial index. In this test, what will you do is, uh, we will uh, measure the blood pressure in your ankle and also in your arms, both in resting condition and after exercise. So, if the ankle blood pressure is uh, less compared to the arm blood pressure, then that is also an indication uh, 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 sign that you have peripheral arterial disease. Uh, if the skin continuity is lost, that is a wound is developing in a patient with diabetes in the foot, that will be called diabetic foot ulcer. This diabetic ulcer is common in diabetic patients. It is seen in up to 15 to 25 percent of patients. The diabetic ulcer is treated by multiple uh, uh, doctors. It involves a team effort. It involves a podiatrist, means uh, a doctor specialized in foot care or if he is not available, it can be treated by other doctors like your wound will be taken care by the plastic surgeon or a general surgeon and your blood glucose levels will be uh, maintained under control by a physician or an endocrinologist. And if you have any deformities in your foot, they will be corrected by a plastic surgeon or an orthopedician. And if you have blocks in your arteries, those will be opened by interventional radiologist or a vascular surgeon or a cardiologist. So, these are all the team members involved in taking care of a diabetic foot patient. If a patient with a diabetic ulcer comes to physician, he will first um, try to maintain the glucose levels and then he will inspect if there is any sign of infection in the wound. So, signs of infection like redness, increased temperature or swelling. So, if there is infection, we will aggressively manage that infection by taking a sample from that uh, wound and sending it to the laboratory, is there any uh, specific uh, microorganism that is causing the infection and give the antibiotics accordingly. Also that uh, wound will be clean uh, that is called debridement, if there is any infected tissue or a dead tissue in that wound that will be removed. So and then the footwear will be uh, given, the appropriate footwear which is appropriately fitting to the shape of the foot will be advised. And if there is a severe neuropathy, offloading of the wound means to decrease the pressure on the wound, some special kind of uh, shoes or uh, braces or casts will be advised. So, and if the ulcer is not healing for 4 to 6 weeks, then we will investigate uh, aggressively for any vascular uh, disease. 
So, if the uh, vascular uh, disease can be uh, treated, it will be uh, advised for treatment. It will be treated by either surgical means or endovascular means. Surgical means uh, means the artery which is blocked, it will be bypassed using a bypass graft. Bypass graft means placing a artificial uh, blood vessel like uh, tube between a normal artery and a, uh, 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 and a normal artery distal to the level of block means the block level will be bypassed from above to below there will be a new connection that is called a bypass graft. So, that is one way of treating. So, if the patient does not have a suitable vein to do the bypass graft or if he is having uh, disease in the foot arteries that means very small arteries or if he is having multiple diseases or old age then he will be not fit for the surgical treatment. In those cases interventional radiologist role is paramount. We will do angioplasty or stenting for the blocked vessels. So, what we do is uh, we will insert a small uh, wire into the diseased artery or blocked artery and over that wire we will insert one balloon and with the help of balloon we will open the narrowed lumen and to keep that narrowed lumen open we will may sometimes are required to place a stent there. So, these are the main treatment options that we have that is one uh, angioplasty that is uh, physically opening the narrowed uh, artery with a balloon and second one is stenting. So, uh, what are the results of uh, angioplasty and stenting? So, we have uh, 80 to uh, 100 percent success rate with this uh, procedures and the complications rates are very less. So, 2 to 4 percent complications rate. So, this can be avoided by meticulous technique and careful post, post uh, procedural monitoring. The diabetic patients needs to maintain their glucose levels in an optimum manner and also they should avoid smoking and they should have a regular supervised exercise program and the footwear whatever they wear they should be appropriate to the shape of their feet. Also depending upon the stage of the diabetes you need to visit the physician oh. every year or if the, the disease is severe every one to two months. So, in that period of examination the physician will examine is there any signs that indicate that the ulcer will develop in the future. Also, you need to regularly examine your foot daily even the under surface of the foot. If it is not possible to look at the under surface of the foot you can use a mirror or you can take help of other persons. So, and the next thing is you need to avoid soaking the foot that means keeping your foot in the water for a long time. Also, while sitting or sleeping you need to keep your legs at a higher level compared to your heart level and uh, during uh, sitting or uh, standing you need to wiggle your uh, toes to keep the blood flowing in your legs. So, these are all the uh, things that you can do to prevent development of diabetic ulcer. There are four stages in the diabetic foot. In first stage, there will be no evidence of diabetic neuropathy or peripheral artery disease or foot deformity. In second stage, there will be diabetic neuropathy, but there will be no evidence of peripheral artery disease or foot deformity. In uh, third stage, either uh, peripheral artery disease or foot deformity is present along with diabetic neuropathy. In the fourth stage, there will be a foot ulcer or there is a gangrene in the foot. If any part of the body uh, due to lack of blood supply, if it dies then that is called gangrene. 
So, this gangrene usually develops in diabetic patients in the foot due to either wound or infection in the foot. So, this gangrene may uh, require amputation that is a removal of that part of the body to decrease the spread of infection or the spread of gangrene to other parts of the body.